वेरी गुड डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू कंप्यूटर शिक्षा इज सपोर्टेड बाय आई एक्सपेक्ट दैट यू ऑल वुड हैव लर्न अबाउट दिस एडवांस पार्ट ऑफ कैलसी और स्प्रेडशीट केयरफुली दिस एडवांस पार्ट विल गेट ओवर हियर इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास यू विल ऑल अपियर फॉर अ प्रैक्टिकल टेस्ट एंड आफ्टर दैट you will all sit for a written test to be conducted by computer shiksha in today's class you will all revise some of the options that you have learned so far in the calci or spreadsheet advanced part let us first revise what you learned in the last class why is the scenario option used if you have to keep changing your data many times you will need to use the scenario option this will show you both the previous data and also the changes made on it you can use this one by one on the changes made these will be visible to you as border and also by its name can you tell about the differences between find and search formulas using the find formula you can search for a word or a symbol from your text however to use find the word or symbol must appear exactly as it is in your text with the search formula you can look for any word or symbol etc in your text even if its case does not match with the one in the text the search formula is not case sensitive so you can write the word that you're looking for in small letters or capitals or in a mix also can you tell why is the substitute formula used using the substitute formula you can replace your old text with new text Can you tell what is the difference between merge document and share document Using the share document option you can share your spreadsheet data from your system to another system and use it there also For this your system should be connected to the system server And using the merge document option you may merge your current spreadsheet document with another document can you tell what is the difference between sum if and sum ifs using sum if formula you can use the name and another condition to get the sum or total from your data you will need to use the sum ifs formula when you want the total or sum from your data based on two or more than two conditions now all of you switch on your computers and using any of the methods taught to you open your spreadsheet file today you will practice using the options that you have learned so far now type the data shown in front of you in your sheet can you tell if you need to send your spreadsheet document to someone else then how will you do so if you need to send your spreadsheet document to someone else then you can do so in two ways the first method is to use the send option in the file menu and the second is to use the standard toolbar for doing this you need to have an outlook account now all of you go ahead and practice using this option and understand how you can use this option to send your file in case you face any problems watch the video with the help of this video we will now see how we can send our calci document through email so to be able to send your document the document as you can see you, it, you already have some data on your calci sheet to be able to send this document as email you should have an outlook account you can do this by 
clicking on the standard toolbar document as mail or you can go to the file menu click on send and then from the option select document as email when you select this your outlook page should open however since the system connected where we are showing you the video has not been linked to the outlook it is not able to open the outlook page however if your system is linked or uh, linked to outlook or has an outlook account you will open an outlook page and you can send your document after typing the email address to any receiver can you tell what all you can do by using the properties option by using the properties option you can get all important information about your document like when was the file saved which date was it saved on and at what time was it saved etc you can even give a description about your document and you can even set a password for your document now all of you practice the use of the properties option and then also show how you will apply a password on your document if you face a problem watch the video to know more let us watch this video now and revise what all we can do by using the properties option the properties option will tell you a lot about your file so if you want to use the properties option for a file you need to go to the file menu click there click on properties a box opens and by default right now it is opening in the general tab in the general tab it shows you the title since it is untitled the type it is spreadsheet type location is not shown because it is not saved created on modified all these data is available in the general tab in description you can give a title for your sheet for instance we can give cs as title you can also type a subject for this particular sheet what is the sheet about and you can also give any comments that you want so in the subject we are typing class 11 then there is custom properties which we are not using right now go to internet it says do not refresh automatically refresh this document after so and so time or redirect from this document here you can link this to another document on your computer so you can use any of these do not refresh automatically refresh this document here you can give the time after how much time you want this document to be refreshed if you go to security you should not you should choose do not refresh automatically before you go to security now in security you have two options open file read only record changes if you want to protect it with a password click on protect and you can type a password you also have to use type the confirm password which should be the same as the password now this file is protected and it goes into record change mode mode which means that any changes that you made will be recorded or shown by red color so if you select don't select open file read only then when you open the file it will ask you for a password by using the password you will be able to open your file the next tab is for statistics it shows you the number of sheets number of cells used number of pages which are there in this sheet or in this file so this is how you can use the properties option can you tell what option you will need to use if you want to apply an object or a background on your spreadsheet document to apply an object or a picture on your sheet you will need to use the gallery option you can use the gallery option from two places firstly you can use it from the standard toolbar and secondly from the tools menu next show how you can use the gallery option to insert some pictures on a different sheet if you have a doubt then watch and learn from the video 
Let us watch this video now and see how we can use the gallery option to insert a picture on our sheet, picture, object, which you like. So we, if we want, we can choose a fresh sheet. We want to do this on sheet number two, which is blank already. We will go to the tools menu and click on the gallery option. You can also use the standard toolbar gallery icon. Go to tools, click on gallery option. The gallery opens and from here you can choose any of the themes. For instance, in this video we have chosen transport and then choose a picture which you want to insert. Right click on it and then click on insert and copy. And you will see that the picture has got inserted on your sheet. You can scroll up and down and you can see that picture has been inserted on your sheet. Now, if you want to keep this picture, this is right now in the foreground. It is covering the cells. If you want to keep it at the, at the background, go to tools again and go to arrange and click on two background options. So you will see that the picture has become a background to your sheet, which means now on the cells available on the sheet, you can work, do any work that you want. So this is how you will be able to use the gallery option to insert a picture and you can also make it a background picture. Now show how you will get the total of the entries from your sheet which have the same name. If you have any doubts in doing this, then watch the video and clear your doubts. We will now watch this video to see how we can get the total of two similar names. So let's first go to sheet one where we have data. We have the student's name. So let's type another name which is the same as one of the names which is already there. So let's type Kanika because Kanika one name is already existing. Let us also create some marks, maths and science and then we can just use the total. We can use the formula which is already applied here by dragging it down and we get the total for this Kanika to be 164. Let's also give an email ID. So this time we are giving Kanika 23 to make it different from the earlier one. And let us also key in a date of birth for the second Kanika. So we are keying in second month, 23rd date, 1993. So now that we have the data, what we want to do is we want to use the condition, one condition saying that all the names which are similar, their total marks we want to be total. So we want the sum of their total marks. So since we want Kanika, we will write Kanika here. And then there are two Kanikas, so we need to add their total marks. So we will use the sum if formula because we are using one condition. So that will be equal to sum if, begin the bracket. And then it says range. So we want the from the student's names, that is the range. So we select this range, put a semicolon. And then our criteria is the name Kanika. Wherever Kanika is being repeated, that is the criteria we are using. Semicolon again. And the sum range is from the total mark. So we will select the total marks column. And then close the bracket and press enter. So you will see that the total marks of the two Kanika students, which is 351 appears here. You can see the first one of the Kanikas marks were 164 and the first Kanika 187. So if you total them, it is 351. So this is how you can use the sum if formula for doing this operation on your Calci sheet. Now, all of you show how you will get the month of birth of a person from the DOB column or the date of birth column entry 
in your data. If you come across a problem in getting the month of birth from the date of birth entry, then watch the video and learn from it. Let us watch this video now and see how we can extract or get the month from any given date or date of birth. So for this, in the G1 cell, we are typing the title month because we are going to find the month from the date of birth. Then in the next cell, we are going to use the text formula to find the month from the date of birth. So we'll use equal to text, begin bracket, and then you have to choose the number or the date. So we choose the date of birth here, semicolon, and then it asks for format. So we put double inverted commas and M, 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 four times M, close the inverted commas and close the bracket. And then you press enter. It will return the month in text. So in this date of birth, 12 is the date of uh, the month which is December so it returns December if you want date of month for all the other date of births you can just drag this black dot downwards or double click on it and you get the date of birth the month from the date of birth for each of these students so this is how you will use the text formula to get the month from the date of birth why do we use leap year formula? You will use the leap year formula to know which year from a list of years is a leap year and which is not a leap year. Now, all of you type out the date given in front of the column and tell which ones from amongst these are leap years. Let us watch the video and know more about how the leap year formula is used. Let us now watch this video and see how we can find the leap year from any given date, whether it is a leap year or not. So for this, we have already keyed in three different dates and we are going to use the formula is leap year. So we apply that formula equal to is leap year, begin bracket, and then select the date from which we want to find and close the bracket and press enter. So you can see one comes, which means that this year is a leap year. 2020 is a leap year. If you drag this down for the other three dates, it shows that 16 is also a leap year, but 11, the year 2011 is not a leap year because it shows zero. So this is how you can use the formula is leap year for finding out leap year or not from a given date. Can you tell what is the difference between days in year and days in month formulas? With the days in year formula, you can get the days in between two years. And with the days in month formula, you can get the days of a month between two dates. Show how you will use these formulas on the new dates that you have inserted in your sheet. We will watch this video now and learn how we can use the days in month and days in year formulas to find the number of days in a, in a month which is given in a particular date and also the number of days in a year. So for that, we we'll, let's let's first type the titles days in month and days in year. We can just change the width of the column if we want. The second title is days in year. However, we notice that we want to apply the formula here. So let's just cut and paste. We, we cut and paste this days in month and days in year that we have just typed from here and make it a title in the upper cells. So here we can just paste it. You can use the shortcuts for this. Now to find the days in month, we will use the formula equal to days in month and then open the bracket 
select the date from which we want to look at the month and find the number of days in that month. So if we select that date, close the bracket and then press enter. And as you can see, since it's the month of December, it shows 31 days. If you drag this down, the formula gets copied. And for the next month also, it shows 30 days and 31 days. April and May. Next is days in year. So if you want to find the days in a year from a particular date, we use this formula equal to days in year. Begin bracket and then select the date from which we want to know the days in that particular year, in that date. So we select that date, close the bracket, and you will notice that since this is a leap year, it shows the number of days as 366. If you copy this formula by dragging downwards, you can see that for the other leap year also 366 days, but since 2011 is not a leap year, it shows 365 days. So this is how you can use days in month and days in year formula on your Calci sheet. Can you tell what is the difference between the find and the search formula? When you want to look for a word or some symbol in your text, you will use the find formula. However, for this, you need to type the word or symbol that you're looking for in exactly the same way that it would appear in the text. The search formula also works very much like the find formula, but this is not case sensitive. So you can type the word or symbol you're looking for in upper or lower case or even a mix. Now, from the given email ID, say what is the position of each character till the at the rate sign. Let us now watch the video to see how both these formulas are used. With the help of this video now, let us see how we use the find or the search options or search formula. So we want to find the position of a character. So we are typing find equal to find begin bracket, then begin the inverted commas. We want to find the position of N in the name of Sachin. So we have typed N, close the inverted commas, semicolon, and then we select the cell where the text is. Close the bracket and press enter and you can see it shows sixth position. Now if in find, if we edit the formula and we write capital N, by mistake it is showing NPV, so let's just correct this. We just want to, we have not changed anything else. Find, bracket, begin inverted commas, capital N, but now it does not show the value. It, it shows an error message, which means that this is case sensitive. The find formula is case sensitive. We can also use search formula. So we type search bracket within bracket. We give the inverted commas and here we type capital N. Although capital N is not there in Sachin's name, close the inverted comma semicolon and then select the name, close the bracket, press enter and you can still see search is not case sensitive. So whether you type N small or capital, it shows you the position which is number 6. Now we want to find the position of the at the rate symbol in the email IDs of all these students. So we can use find or search because this is a symbol. So we are using equal to find, begin bracket, begin inverted commas, at the rate, close inverted commas, semicolon, then select the email ID, close the bracket and press enter and you can see the at the rate symbol is at the 10th position in the cell. Now, if we edit in the formula bar, instead of find, we use search, you will still see that it gives you the answer. Search and then the rest of the formula is the same. It still shows the 10th position. If you drag this down, 
so that this formula gets applied to all the email IDs. You can see the position of the at the rate symbol is shown to you for all the email IDs. So this is how you can use find and search formulas. Remember, find is not case is case sensitive, whereas search is not case sensitive. Next, from all of your own email IDs, show how you will find the positions for the first name. Watch the video to see how this is done in case you encounter a problem. This video tells us how we can use the left formula to find the first name from an email ID. Actually, we are trying to find the characters which are written before the dot. So we have written this first name as a title. So we use the left formula equal to left, begin bracket, then select the text which is the email ID, semicolon and the number. In this case, we are counting that the name is of six characters. So we type six and close the bracket and press enter and shows you the first name Saurabh. But if the name was of different length, seven characters or ten characters, then this formula would not give us the correct answer. So we will use equal to left, begin bracket, then select the text, which is the email ID, semicolon, and then instead of number, we are finding the number. We use the find formula to find the number. Find, begin bracket, and within inverted commas, we write the dot because we want to find before the dot, close the inverted commas, semicolon, select the text from where the number has to be found, close the bracket and minus 1 and then again close the bracket, minus 1 because we don't want to count the dot. So it shows you the name Saurabh, first name. If you drag this down, you get all the names. Actually, the text which is appearing before the dot will appear here because that is what we have done. We have done left and find both the formulas we have used here. Now, all of you use the solver to show how you can change the salary total as per your desire. If you face a problem, then watch the video and learn how this is done. This video will now tell us how we can use the solver formula or the solver option. We already have some data here in this sheet too. Four months salary is given and a target salary of 140,000 is shown here. So we want that the salary of one or two or more months should be changed so that the total salary is 140,000. So first we have four months salary. So let's find out the four months salary. How much is it? To do that, we will use the sum formula equal to sum, begin bracket, and then select the salaries and close the bracket. And you can find that the sum is 10,000, sorry, 1,6600, ,006 which is less than 14,000. So now we choose the target salary, four month salary, go to tools and then go to solver. This box opens. We already have our target cell, which is four month salary. And the value of, we want the value to be 1,40,000. So we type that here. And then it asks by changing which cells. So we select one or two months. For instance, we have selected June and July, the cells to change, and we click on solve, and it shows you instantly to change some values so that the result is 1,40,000. If we want, we can keep this result. So we click on keep result, and you can see what has happened is June salary has been increased to 84,000. July has been reduced to zero, but if you add all four months salary now, 
you get the target salary which is 1 lakh 40 thousand so this this is how you will use the solver option now from the name column in your data show how you can get a count for how many times a particular name appears this video now helps us to use count if formula to count how many times the same name is repeated amongst the students names list in this sheet we have the students name it could be anything so for instance we want to find out the name of kanika which is as you can see is being repeated twice in this list so we can use the count if formula to find this we'll type equal to count if begin bracket then it says range so the range is the names of the students so we select that range from here within the a column so we select this then put a semicolon and our criteria is that we are looking for the name kanika so we select the name kanika close the bracket and press enter and you can see that it shows you that the answer is 2 which means the name kanika in this list in this range appears two times so this is how you can use the count if formula on your calci sheet data next show how you can get the salary amount for the first second and third rank from the salary totals let us now watch the video watch this video now and see how we can get the salary from a given data which has names and salaries in a in ranking so the first rank highest salary then the next then the next so we want rank one two three of the salaries so let's type some data we are typing name here in the m column and then we'll type the salaries in the n column so name we are just giving a b c d e f you can also type the same data if you like and then salary so we are typing some numbers here for a we have typed 56987 and so on for b for C, 90,000. For D, 69,785. For E, 88,958. And for F, 94,785. Now we want to rank these salaries. Rank 1, 2, 3. We want to find the highest salary, which is num rank number 1. So we put rank here as a title and then we type 1, 2, 3 and on, on the other side the, we want the salary to be shown. So rank is 1, 2, 3. Now we apply the formula to find these ranks and if you remember we have used this formula earlier. We will use the large formula equal to large bracket begin and then select the data which is the salary column so we select that and then rank 1 is what we are looking for so we can select that rank here and close the bracket and it shows you the rank 1 out of this range is 94785 and if we drag this down you can get the second rank and the third rank second rank is 90000 third rank is 88968 so this is how you will use the large formula to find the rank of salaries. Now all of you show how you can use a formula to find the value for row 2 and column 2. Let us now watch the video and see how we can find such values. Let us now watch this video and see how we can find the value of a given cell for instance the first column second cell we want to find second row we want to find the value 
So we can use the formulas that we have already learned. For instance, we want to find in this sheet the value or where the name Saurav is written. So we use indirect formula equal to indirect begin bracket and then we use the address formula also. So we are using two formulas begin bracket after address and then the row. So we type row begin bracket again select the cell for which we are trying to find the address close the bracket semicolon and then column because we need the column also begin bracket again select the cell A2 the cell where Saurav is written close the bracket semicolon and then you need to give 4 close the bracket and the value gets returned in that cell what is written as Saurav so it shows you Saurav as the content of that cell. So this is how you can use the indirect and address formulas together to find the value. Next, all of you show how you will use the H lookup formula to get the data from your fifth column onto another sheet. If you have a problem in doing this, then watch and learn from the video. By watching this video, let us now learn how we can use the H lookup formula. So for doing this, we are first selecting from our sheet 1 data, the first row, which is the title row. So we have just selected the entire row and we just do a copy paste. So we do copy and we go to sheet 3 and paste it there. So you can see. We are using the edit mino for copy paste. You can also use the shortcut command. So we have just copied the title from the sheet 1 to sheet 3. Now let's apply the formula here. Equal to note that right now we are using B lookup instead of H lookup. Just to show you what difference will be there. Begin bracket and then search criteria. The search criteria is the A1 and then you need the range. So we select this entire range from sheet 1, the entire data. We select. Then you can continue here in the formula bar, semicolon and then select the row or the cell, we want to find the fifth row, Kanika. We want the values for Kanika. So we selected five, fifth row, semicolon, and then we type zero, which is the order, close the bracket, press enter. And you will see on your sheet three, it says email ID. This is because we have used VLOOKUP. Whereas we were supposed to use H lookup. All you need to do is go to the formula bar and instead of H type, uh, instead of V type H lookup. So just change that and then press enter and you will see the name Kanika appears. So if you drag this you towards the right side, you will get all the details for Kanika. As you can see in the video. All the details are available now, maths marks, science marks, total marks, email ID, the month from the date, the position of the at the rate symbol. So this way we can use the H lookup formula for doing this kind of operation. You can see H lookup bracket. Then the uh, cell and the sheet, semicolon, the fifth row and zero, close the bracket. This is how it is being used. We will now end this class here. So all of you save and then close your file 
and properly shut down your computers. All of you must remain present in the next class. As you know, you will all appear for a practical test in the next class. In case any of you are absent for this test, then you will not be able to appear for the written test. In this class, all of you revised the use of some of the options from the advanced part of Calci or spreadsheet. Thank you.